Chronicles 20, I'm going to start reading in verse 1. It says, It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, and with them other beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. And, excuse me, then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria, and behold, they be in Hazazon Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared, and set himself to seek the Lord, and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord, before the new court, and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven, and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gave us it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend, forever? And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us, as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to, um, to inherit. O Lord our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then went, uh, excuse me, then upon uh, Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mattaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Uh, behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. And ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Let's stop there and have a word of prayer this evening. You're going to be see go ahead and be seated. Um, verse 3, the first three words of it. And Jehoshaphat feared. I'm going to start this, the, the message off with, with this statement. Use it kind of as a springboard uh, for the introduction tonight and for uh, the message as a whole. The, the statement is this, that fear is a reality of life. Um, for the message, I did just a, a simple... Google search on the word fear and what I got was page after page after page of inspirational quotes on how to deal with fear, how to overcome fear, you know, all, all that sort of thing because fear is a reality of life. Whether, whether we want to admit it or not, um, it's just a reality of life. As guys, we often, you know, have the, the macho type persona, you know, and like the mentality that I ain't afraid of nothing. Um, but if we're really honest, that's typically just a cover and not true. Most guys who act that way are more worried about what people think of them than anything, and acting tough is a way to hide that. Fear is simply a reality of life. Whether we like it or not, whether we're willing to admit it or not, we all have fear. Um, early on uh, driving, I had very little fear. I was 16 years old and dumb. Um, I wasn't a crazy driver or anything, but I just, I wasn't, I wasn't afraid of it. It was fun. But then um, Josh was born, and I became, the, you can ask my wife, I became the stereotypical dad with their newborn. Um, the the um, doctor that Lisa liked only delivered in the hospital in Enumclaw, so we were up in the Wilder's neck of the woods, which is forever away from where we lived, and it should have only been about a 25-minute drive, but it took a solid hour to get home that first night because I was going probably half the speed limit and every car that came on a side street, they were supposed to stop, but I did just to make sure that they were going to so they didn't hit me, you know, because I have 
this little thing in my car? What's going to happen if they hit me with it? You know, we all have fear. It's a reality of life. Um, so, told you, I, I did a Google search. Here's a list. I'm probably not going to read through all of them because it would be exhausting. But here's a list of the top 100 fears. Um, I did not write down their technical name because I didn't want to stumble through all those. But here you go. Here's, here, I'll give you at least a handful of them. Spiders, snakes, heights, crowds, dogs, lightning, germs, flying, holes, cancer, death, public speaking, being alone, failure, birds, needles, people, water, abandonment, blood, commitment, long words. I find that, that was the longest one. Its technical term is the longest word I have ever seen in my life, and it means the fear of long words. Um, <laughs> The unknown, driving, uh, falling, success, God, cats, change, balloons, darkness, men, fear, love, um, fear of fear, um, fear of love, uh, vomiting, bridges, bugs, butterflies, fear of everything, feet, sleep, bees, buttons, ducks, frogs, sharks, being forgotten, cockroaches. It goes on and on and on and on. I'm, I didn't even get halfway through the list right there. It goes on and on and on. And that list was only the top 100 and it didn't even cover things like you know politics or you know what's happening in the world around us or fears at home the point is fear is reality of life we all have fear that we deal with people deal with fear in in different ways some people when they have something they're afraid of they they run from fear um, you know you picture a person running and screaming because there's a spider. Um, it's been a few years now that this happened, but uh, it fits well for this. We, uh, for our teens, every November we do a retreat, and the camp that we go to has been fixing up their facilities for the last uh, handful of years. So now at this point, it's actually pretty nice. Um, and each year we've come back, it's it's been a little bit nicer. But the first few years that we went there. Um, it was a little sketchy at times, which results in some great stories and multiple scenarios that fit this, this example of fear, where I, multiple scenarios where I had girls screaming and running that, you know, I had to come and figure out what the problem was. So I'll mention two of them, my, my favorite two. The first um, was in the evening, one of the first years we went there, first or second year we went there, and the girls had all gone into their cabin to go to bed and I hear screaming and all the girls come piling out. The reason, a bat was flying around in their room. <laughs> and they were all sure that it would either get tangled in their hair or bite them and they'd become a vampire. One of the two. I'm, I'm not sure which. But they refused to go back in that room until I caught him and put him outside. Until I did, they were too scared to go back in. The second, um, once again, the girls, they were in the girls' restroom. I don't know why, it's always the girls' rooms that have issues, but um, the girls' restroom, and suddenly they all running out screaming because of a spider, and all, all the girls come out, and I go in to kill it, and I found it was a lot more than just a spider. I killed one uh, daddy long leg, and um, it was like I angered them um, because there were spiders coming out of everywhere. I've, you know, I've been in some spider-filled crawl spaces, but I've never seen as many spiders as I killed that day. But for some, that's how they deal with fear. They run away screaming. You know, they want to be as far away from what they're afraid of as they possibly can. Uh, if they're afraid of water, they never come near pools, rivers, lakes, or oceans. If they're afraid of, you know, politics, they never follow it. They try not to, uh, to listen to it. If they're afraid of crowds, they never go uh, anywhere that they might encounter a large crowd. Um, and if they do encounter those things, they get away from it fast. They deal with it by, by running. Other people deal with fear by uh, seeking help. Maybe they're afraid to do something, but they want to, so they ask someone to do it with them. You know, they... Uh, are going to jump on into some water, but they're afraid, so they ask a friend and they hold, their, hold hands and jump into it together type thing. You know, they want someone to go through it with them. Other people still, um, and I think this is probably the area I fall into most often, is that we face fear, or we deal with fear just by facing it. Um, and maybe this is stupidity on my part, I don't know, but um, I've figured out that things are scary. Um, but unless I'm going to live inside my house my entire life in a bubble, I'm going to have to face those fears. So rather than letting fear stop me, and again, I'm just I'm giving myself, I'm not saying it's the way you have to be, but rather than letting fear stop me from doing something I want to or need to do, um, I just do it fast before I can talk myself out of it. 
Just get in there and do it. Prime, uh, prime example. I'm going to be a little vulnerable here, so be nice to me. Um, I'm a, a plumber by trade, but one of my biggest fears, actually two of them, are tight spaces and rats. I'm a plumber. Nearly every day I work as a plumber, I get under someone's house and stuff myself into a little dark, tight place where very often rats inhabit. I have, have um, for years, and I have reason to fear rats. I've been bitten by them in those crawl spaces. Um, I have for years been told that I'm extremely fast moving around and getting work done in crawl spaces. And I am convinced that the reason is because I'm terrified to be in there and I want out. I'm going to get this done and get out of here. But um, I'm scared of it. I mean, it's something that, that I, I admit I am afraid of, but I don't say, well, I'm scared of it, so I'm not going to do it. I've known guys who have, and they didn't last very long. It's my job. I just face the fear and do it. Fear is, is a reality of life. Now, what does that have to do with, with preaching? I say all of that to kind of point us in the right direction because fear is what we're seeing in this passage that we started with. I read you the, the beginning of verse 3. I'll, I'll point it out again. Um, Jehoshaphat feared. Jehoshaphat feared. Um, the Moabites, the Ammonites, and then it doesn't specify who the others are. Just the Moabites, the Ammonites, and a whole bunch of other people are coming to battle. Two of, of Israel's big-time enemies and some others that we're not sure who they are have united their forces. They've, they've set aside their differences so they can come as one united front against against Israel. And as a result of it, we see the start of verse 3, Jehoshaphat's afraid. He recognizes this is not good. This is a problem. But then the very next thing that he did was he went to God. The very next thing, verse 3, Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. This is not the, the focus of the message, but verse 3 and 4 um, Jehoshaphat did some, some very wise things when faced with fear. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to preach it right now. I'm going to at some point, but I'm not going to preach this tonight, but I'm going to give you the outline that I, or what I saw in here that just is really good. Jehoshaphat faced fear. He, Jeho he immediately prayed, he immediately fasted, and he immediately got others to do the same. He surrounded himself with everyone. Uh, but again, I'm not going to preach that tonight. I really want to, but I'm going to leave that. Um, God answers to Hosphat. He, he addresses three areas of his fear. And I want us to notice, um, in all of those three areas that God addressed, God was there. And more than just there, God was the solution. Each one of those that, that God addresses are our fears and problems that we face as well. And the solution for us always points to God. Number one, God, when we don't know what to do. Look at verse 12 with me, chapter 20, verse 12. O oh, oh our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh up against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. Here is, is Jehoshaphat in a, in a very a, a vulnerable moment of honesty. I'll just put it that way. Remember, he is surrounded right now by all of the people that he is king of. I mean, he has, he has the nation around him, and he just admits, we have no might, I don't know what to do. You know, he had, he had enemies bearing down on him, no, no hope of defending themselves, or at least no hope of victory, and no idea what to do. And as I, as I study this, I, what came to my mind is, how often do we face that same type of scenario. You know, not maybe an enemy bearing down on us, but a situation where we simply don't know what to do. And none of us like that. No one, no one likes not knowing. Uh, my kids are 10, 8, and 4. And we end up having the same conversation every single day. Every day, my kids will ask either my wife or I, what are we going to have for dinner? Every single day. And every day, my answer, if they ask me, my answer is the same. Don't worry about it. We never let you go without eating. We don't plan to start today. That's pretty much my answer. And yet, I know tomorrow they're going to ask the same question again. Why? Because they want to know. We don't like not knowing. And yet, it's something that, that we face all the time. 
some, some quick examples. We hear about uh, possibility of layoffs at work and we don't know if we're on that list. The check engine light comes on in your car and you don't know what the cause is. My truck for the last six months um, when I started, the oil pressure gauge, it's the weirdest thing. Instead of going like where it's pegged, it hangs upside down. It doesn't when it's off, but all of a sudden it just hangs there upside down. Um, I've tested it. There's nothing wrong with the oil pressure. I don't know what it is. It's still driving, so I just keep driving it. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know what to do. Um, things like that. A, a new opportunity arises, but with it, you know, comes questions and you don't know uh, what to do. Um, I, I hesitate giving this one. Your, your wife is upset at you for, for something you said or did, and being a guy, you probably don't know. Um, you surely don't know what to do. That's for sure in there. You know she's upset, you just don't know why. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm ki <laughs> I told you, when I, when I saw it in my, I wrote it and I thought this is a bad idea. I saw it in my notes and thought I shouldn't read that and I did. Um, <laughs> No, I, I'm kidding, but, but you get the point. We, we don't like it, but it's very often that it's true that we're put in situations where we don't know and we don't know what to do. But if we read the rest of, of verse 12, he tells us, um, the end of that, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. When we're in that situation of, I simply don't know, look to God. You know, it's so simple, but very often the simplest things are the hardest to get us to do. Because it just seems too simple. There, there must be more I can do when I don't know. No. Don't look at the problem. Don't look at the enemy. Don't look at the, the unknown. Look at God. Because he's there um, when I don't know what to do. And I'll just throw this little tidbit out there. He does know what to do. Don't focus on, on what you don't know. Focus on God. The, the song that we're all familiar with, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. The things of earth will grow, will grow strangely dim. Those, those unknowns don't seem so bad. Um, they, they won't cause need to fear when we're looking at the one who does know. My kids may, may ask every day what's for dinner, but they don't ever fear it because they know when dinner time comes, they're just going to look at the one who knows, their mom, because I probably don't. First off, we can see God when we don't know. Second of all, we can see God when our battle is too big. Look at verse 15. He said, Hearken ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, uh, nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. I'm already giving you um, the scenario. Jehoshaphat knows, the people know, the battle is coming, it's bigger than we can handle. In verse 12, he admits it, for we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. They, they know what's coming. There's nothing that can be done in their power to defend themselves or to prepare themselves for this attack. In, um, in all honesty, on, on their own, the best that they could hope for is to at least, you know, put a hurting on the, on the army that's attacking them before they go down. You know, I'm going to go down, but I'm going to go down swinging. It's what they're facing. Um, they know that this is bigger than them. This is, again, an area that, that we face. Enemies or problems bigger than, than we are, and it causes us to fear. I think of uh, David, who we looked at a few weeks ago, facing a lion, a bear, and a giant. All enemies, all problems bigger than him. And we face things like that. I don't have armies coming at me. I don't face, you know, lions, bears, and spear-wielding giants. But I face problems bigger than me all the time. Anytime someone wants advice or counsel, that's a problem that's bigger than me. Anytime um, a decision has to be made on how to raise my kids for God's glory, that's a problem bigger than me. We, we face them, and let's be honest, they scare us. But what God's... Um, response or what, what was God's response to Jehoshaphat is true for us too. God told him, the battle isn't yours, but mine. Just read that in, in verse 15. The battle is not yours, 
but God's. Here's what God's telling him. This battle is too big for you. You're right. You can't do it. But you don't have to. I will. He's telling Jehoshaphat, you don't need to fight. I'm going to do it for you. When the battle is too big for me, it's not too big for God. He still has it under control. So far we've seen God when we don't know what to do, and God when the battle is too big, and then lastly tonight, God when you need help to stand. Look at verse 16 and 17. Um, it says, God continuing to answer, it says, Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel, and ye, or excuse me, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Now think about this for, for just a moment. This is going to be, at least as, as he's hearing it, this is going to be intimidating, even knowing that God's there. Because you still can't see Him. Now, this is totally relying on that God's going to do what He said He's going to do. And what God tells him is, I want you to go out tomorrow as if you're going to fight Him, but don't. Just go there and stand still. In other words, stay out of my way. I want you to go there, I want you to line up and stay out of my way. Don't do anything. You know, your, your enemy is lining up to fight and I just want you to stand there. You know, can you, can you imagine Jehoshaphat, or anyone for that matter, hearing these instructions and going, are you sure? Are we, we sure we don't want to practice tonight, get ready just in case this, this turns out bad? You know, I can picture Jehoshaphat saying, okay, Lord, we're going to do this, but you're there, right? You are going to be here because if not, I've just marched my entire nation out to their slaughter. Here's, you know, this is the position he's in. Jehoshaphat's in, in a spot that he has to stand. His enemies come, he, he has to stand, and the only chance of survival was God. The only chance of survival. This would only work if God stepped in. I'm sure that you can see where I'm going with this, that we too face times of the same thing. Something that, that we have to do, a stand we have to make, but it won't work on our own. But we can't do it on our own. We can't, we can't do it standing by ourselves in, in our strength. It'll only work if God's there. Let me give you a, a few examples. Marriage. Um, I, I love my wife. I think, I think that, that we have a great relationship. I really do. She is uh, my best friend and I would rather spend time with her than anyone else. But men and women are not alike. I mean, and I don't know if you hadn't noticed that, but men and women are alike. You know, she enjoys things that make no sense to me. My wife enjoys opera. So occasionally she'll play it in the car. And I say occasionally because she knows I can't stand it. Um, she was listening to some uh, a week back, two weeks back, I don't know, and, and after a song or two, and we'd gotten a couple songs in this, and I finally said, I don't understand a word that they're saying. And she informed me, it's because it's not in English. Wow. Why, and, and this is my logic, but why in the world would I want to listen to a song that they're not even using my language? <laughs> or not even one I understand. I mean, you know, that... It just makes no, no sense. And then she asked if I would take her to an opera. No. No. <laughs> to sit there for who knows how many hours. You know, I would like to think an hour, but I'm betting four is more likely. To listen to them sing songs that I don't understand. You know, that makes no sense to me. But I am confident, on the other side of this, that I do a whole lot of things that make absolutely no sense to my wife. I'm a guy, so I'm a lot simpler. You know, guys aren't, aren't as complex as women. <laughs> So she probably does get most of it. But I'm sure there are some things that she thinks, why? I mean, why, why would you do that? We are not the same. And to marry, um, to marry and say, this is the person I'm going to spend the rest of my life with, you know, this is a prime example that it only works if God is there. And, and I, I mean, I don't mean that bad, but I don't mean that wrong, but, but it works because God's there. Another example, raising our kids. Um, I was a week away from turning 20 when Josh was, when Josh was born. 
I was 19 years old. I didn't think it then, but I realize now I was a child. And they sent me home with a living thing. <laughs> I mean, and again, at the time, I thought, I'm 19 years old, I know what to do, I turn 20 in a week. Yeah. They sent me home, I, I don't know why the doctors would have trusted to send us home with a kid, I mean, that's crazy. I didn't know what to do. I may have thought I did, but I didn't know what to do. I had no clue how to keep this little thing alive. I'm, uh, again, I, I don't know why they trusted to send him home with me. And then, add trying to raise a child, um, add to that raising a child in this corrupt world, to love and serve God. You know, that's something that we have to do, but without God, I can't. You know, maybe, maybe I could figure out how to keep it alive, but I sure wouldn't have known how to teach him right. And it's still true um, today. You know, I don't know how it works. It works because God. It's where Jehoshaphat is. They, they have to stand, but if they're standing alone, this is going to get really ugly really fast. God tells them, if you'll stand, uh, excuse me, if you'll stand still, you'll see me. If you'll stop trying to fight, you'll see me working. I think very often we don't see, we don't um, stop fighting and stand still long enough to see God. That he's there, but that we decide some, someone has to start swinging a sword and we don't wait for him and we miss getting to see him work. There's so a lot of people who, who, you know, well, I've never seen God work in my life. I've never seen God do anything. And I think this might be our problem. We never just step back and let God work. We decide, well, someone's got to swing that sword and I'm going. Tonight I'm going to um, conclude this very, very simply. I, I've said at the start, we all have fears. They're a reality of life. I'm, and I'm not talking, you know, the irrational fears. Or I'm not talking fears like, you know, bugs or, or rats, which is a very legitimate fear. Um, I'm talking, uh, I'm going to word it this way, big picture fears. We all have, have fears um, in those times where a decision has to be made, but we just don't know what to do. We all have, have fears in those times where, where the enemy just seems too big. We all have fears in those times where um, you know a stand has to be made, but you need help because you can't do it alone. But what God tells Jehoshaphat here, um, he's still telling us. Last half of verse 17, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Fear not, don't be dismayed. God's there. God's going to be with you. And just so we can see the finish, God did as He said and I think better than Jehoshaphat could have imagined. Turn over uh, just a couple of verses, actually. Look over at, at verse 20 uh, through 24. This is the next day. It told them, tomorrow you're going to do this. The next day, they rose early in the morning and went forth in the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his, pro uh, his prophets, so shall ye prosper. I think he's trying to pump them up and get them excited. You know, okay, what God said, we're going to believe he did this. We're going to believe that he's really going to do this and we're not going to get killed right now. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord and that he should praise the beauty and holiness as they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and praise the Lord, uh, and praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. Next day comes, Jehoshaphat lines up his army. They march to where God had, had told them to go. And when they got where they thought they would see their enemies arrayed and ready to attack, um, but what they didn't know was God had already dealt with it. And when they showed up, their enemies were all laying there dead. 
passage that we just read lays it out for us that they turned against each other and not one of them survived. Um, they, they turned their eyes to God. They trusted His plan. They waited for His time. Instead of going the night before, they waited until tomorrow. And when they arrived, God had already won. Not only did they not have to fight the battle, they completely avoided battle. How many battles in life would we avoid if we simply kept our eyes on the Lord, followed His plan, and waited for His time? But I think on the other side of that, you have to say, how many battles have we brought on ourselves because our eyes were off of Him, we didn't do it His way, and we didn't wait for His time? That we've marched into battle that had we just done it God's way, we would have never had to have faced. When the battles come, when it, when it looks like, like this, that it's going to happen and you're, you're facing not knowing what to do or battles too big or, or stands too hard, God is there. Fear not, nor be dismayed, for the Lord is there. Or if I could paraphrase that, don't despair, God is there. Let's pray.